Welcome to the official Jets podcast. We are presented by WinBet. Betting is a team sport. Bet together at WinBet. Eric Gallum, my co-host, Bart Scott. We are joined in studio by Jets defensive back, Michael Carter, or MC2. Michael, how tough of an outcome was that yesterday against the New England Patriots? You guys defensively gave up three points over 60 minutes, but you lose on an 84-yard punt return with five seconds remaining. Uh, yeah, I think the the, the outcome was definitely um, – it was tough. Like, I was definitely upset um, because I feel like our – you know, our op was taken away, like, on defense. And that was, like, more so upset me is, like, as I feel like as a defense, we wanted the opportunity to win the game, too. Just, like, you know, like, obviously, like, the our offense would have liked the opportunity to win the game or, or like, the New England special teams obviously won the game. So I feel that's what kind of upset me the most is, like, we lost our op opportunity to go and win the game for our team. You know, in football, you're supposed to move quickly but not be in a rush. Mm. How do you guys try not to panic but also move with a sense of urgency, understanding where you are in this season? Uh, yeah, I feel like as far as, like, not panicking, we know who we are in, in, in the style of football and the, that, that we play um, and how good we can be when we just fix those little minute things um, and, and get on our details. Um, and so, you know, that's what we – we harped on today um, in the meetings and watching the film um, and all, everything's fixable. Um, and so we know what we got to get done when we show up on Wednesday. Um, we just got to be able to, to, to put it into motion and, you know, be on our details and execute. How high of a standard do you guys have? Because when <laughs> Bart was playing, I'm having memories back in 2009, 2010, where you're dominant over the course of 60 minutes. You mm -hmm. had six sacks of Mac Jones for his second consecutive game. Uh, one thing that Carl Lawson just said is that we can correct some things. We didn't play a perfect game. We right. got to get some takeaways. Can you talk about the standard that you guys are holding yourself to right now? Yeah, man, like Carl's right. Like there are some things that, you know, we left some plays out there, um, inches in the game that we could have taken advantage of. We could have you know, put the game away ourselves on defense. Um, and so, that, you know, that's that's the standard. We feel like we got to get the ball. Um, and when we get the ball, we got to score. Um, and and that's, that's the standard and that's what we got to do. Um, and just like if we were, if we were down, you know, our offense would pick us up. Um, we feel like it's our job to help them in any aspect that we can. And, and they always help us. Um, you know, if the team goes down there and drives on us, you know, they they go down there and answer right back like that. Um, and, and that's the, you know, that's how, you know, great teams are. I mean, you guys are a young team. And sometimes not everybody's going to have the same perspective as some of the veteran players. Yeah. How do you keep this unit and group together, understanding that you don't want the media, you don't want maybe – things to bubble over in the locker room. How do you keep this unit together and just focus on farming your own land and not have the frustration? Because it is frustrating to have that type of performance. No performance is ever perfect, but when you play and you hold a team to basically three points and you lose, that has to be gut-wrenching. Yeah, um, I think it's just the the belief we have in each other. Um, you know, we always preach it's all about us. And it's always still going to be about us and the, everybody in the building because we're the ones who put in the time and the work um, to put out a good product on Sunday. And we believe in each other um, so we can have those conversations uh, with each other and, and the hard ones where, uh, you know, you got to talk about some things, but it's because, you know, we have faith and we respect each other in that way. Um, and so, uh, you know, there's no diversion or anything that's that's going on because you know we have that belief in each other that you know we can get the job done on on any given Sunday versus you know any team um and everybody's going to be out there and do their job to the best of their ability how hard are you guys making it on opponents once they move the ball past the 50 yard line like 
felt like there are times we have bent a little bit yesterday, and Bart can talk about this, but when you guys needed a play, you moved them back. So instead of, hey, they're in the red zone, it's like they're kicking a long field goal. Nick Folk went one of three yesterday. So uh, when you guys needed a play, when you needed momentum, I know you didn't get the takeaway, but <laughs> he kept on moving them back where they weren't able to penetrate the 10-yard line, the five-yard line, and get into that zone. Yeah, um, and just there are some plays that, you know, they turned into explosives, um, and that kind of sustained some of those drives. Um, and, and all those things, like, like I was saying, you know, fixable things, um, just being in the right spots and being detailed in, in our approach. Um, but, you know, if they don't score, you know, they can't win. Uh, so being but don't break, you know, give us an inch and we'll defend it. Uh, that's the mentality. Um, and when it's time to lock in, like, you know, all right, they got to play. Let's lock in right here and, and you know, make sure we, we get off the field, uh, we get the ball back to the offense, and, you know, we keep points off the board. Hey, you guys went from first place to last place, and you guys still have an above 500 record. But how much pressure does that put on this week to make sure that you're able to get on the right start? Like, how do you approach this week, the intensity, ratcheting it up, uh, attention to detail, and understanding that, it's levels to the months in football. The mm -hmm. fact that you're entering the championship months, what is the, the the mood like, and what's the anticipation for practice and being able to practice the way that you're going to have to play to be able to get in the tournament? Um, I think the there, there's always a sense of urgency when we go out and, and we practice because we practice hard um, every day, um, running to the football in whatever week this is, still running to the football, um, you know, showing effort at practice and making sure, you know, we're holding each other accountable on that field. Um, and so it's always been like that. Uh, the standard doesn't change. Um, we know how important the game is, this game is because it's the next game. Um, and so we, we plan to go out there and execute and, and, and win. Um, and, you know, obviously that starts on Wednesday and starts it can start actually today and just getting those um little things that we can get corrected corrected today um so we know what to take into wednesday and and make sure we're straight on um and so yeah how are you five guys working as a unit you get new cornerbacks this year in sauce gardner and dj reed and then lamarcus joiner healthy and then obviously you bring in Jordan Whitehead early on in the year I know you guys were talking about communication it seems like everybody's on the same page each and every week and you guys expect to dominate yeah and I think like it was a challenge at the beginning because you know you didn't really know each other um like I think out of the our secondary from last year I'm like maybe the only one who's like out there so like it took a while. We had to spend the time with each other and get to know each other, how each other thinks, how how this guy next to me processes information, how fast he can process information because somebody's motioning over and we got to make a, a checkup fast. Like, I'll just do the simplest thing to, to help him out, um, whoever that guy is. It's just stuff like that. Uh, so just, just taking the extra time, you know, after they say we're done for the day and just getting in a film room with each other and just going through – that communication, going through how we see things, going through how we're gonna, you know, this is how we're gonna do it. If if you have a a different way you wanna do it, let's talk through it. Like mm -hmm. all that stuff, like we really, I think, put the time in to each other and, and gave it back to one another to be able to, to be able to play at a high level. Do you think it's beneficial for um, all the guys that have been in the playoffs to kind of pull you young guys together to explain because early on it may you may think that it's business as usual, mm -hmm. but playoffs is a total you don't until you've been in it, you have no idea. And until you've been in, in those games leading up to trying to secure a playoff spot, it's a totally different level. So have you had guys considered maybe getting the Dwayne Browns, getting, you know, Whitehead, getting CJ Mosley to kind of explain to some of the young guys that may not be thinking about it. Because the next game isn't just the next game. It's a 
the, the end of the season and still having something to play for is a totally different level of intensity, level of t- attention to detail, and everybody has to take their play to a totally different level. And that has to be done and, and taken it, you know, to account when you practice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, that makes sense. Um, and obviously, I don't have any experience yet uh, in that. But, you know, I know I can go to Dwayne or go to Jordan and ask them, you know, what I need to do, what we need to do. And, and they can explain, um, you know, how the steps we need to take to be able to to, per, to play at a, a playoff level. Um, and, and that's the, the those type of guys, you know, it's good guys who can, uh, who are willing to reach back out, reach back into the youth and, and pull us along with them. Um, you know, we got those type of guys in the in the building who are willing to do that. What do you like most about playing the nickel position? And also, what's the most significant challenges that come along with playing inside? Mm-hmm. What I like most. I would say is just, um, you know, I like to tackle. I like to be in the run fits and like be around the action, um, and so it, it's 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 cool. Like I enjoy, you know, games the most when I can when they allow me to to you know be a what they call a, a baby backer. <laughs> and, yeah, I enjoy those games, um, and then you know just the the trust that everybody has in me the to communicate uh, and carry that communication, you know, when I'm even when I'm moving or when there's movement. Um, yeah, I enjoy that a lot because I feel like I can handle it. Um, and and so the, the, I guess there's some pressure that comes with that, because if you're wrong, you know, some people be out of the their spots. But, you know, I feel you know, I feel good that, that everybody trusts me to be able to do that. Um, and then, you know, the challenges is obviously all the space. It's a lot of space, um, but, you know, it is what it is. You know, you got a man up in there. Um, and so, I, you know, I take it head on, um, you know, back down from, from any challenge. So, Yeah, I, I saw you shooting gaps last game. Oh, yeah. like you hurt your chicken wing a little bit, <laughs> you know, playing, play, playing cutback. But um, how much time do you actually maybe spend – during 907 or run fits with the run with the linebackers to be able to maybe add some tools to your tool belt as far as maybe being able to knife that in if you feel like hey it's a big gap there you want to switch it up and you want to be able to scrape outside are you maybe considering going over and, and, and doing some 907 so you can learn some of the tools that linebackers have to be able to control your defensive lineman when you feel like hey you know we're in a big flex front and we got a lot of gaps here I'm feeling like I want to scrape these guys or knife my DN yeah, or half my yeah, nose guard. Yeah, that's, a, that, yeah, that's actually, um, you know, a really good idea. I know, uh, you know, those linebackers, they, they show me a lot of love um, just in the in the communication and, and when I'm coming, when they know I'm in the fit, um, just making sure I'm straight um, on where I'm at, you know, if if things start moving, pullers and, and – you know, all those things happen. They know where I'm supposed to be and make sure I know where I'm supposed to be. Coach White Cotton, um, you know, when I'm in the run fits too, when we do those team periods where we're just walking through those run fits, um, he's making sure that, okay, I know what the D defense alignment is supposed to be doing on this play. Um, and so I know where my fit's supposed to be. And then if he does something else, you know, I just fit off of him in, in that instance. But, uh, you know, they definitely, you know, give me a lot of, of feedback and in, in, in being when I'm in those in those run fits. Uh, you were a rookie last year. How impressed are you by what Sauce is doing out here? Ten games into his NFL career, he leads the National Football League with 14 PDs. Man, that dude is special. Um, like, it's unreal. Like, he's brought, like, a, a, a whole – a real deal, like good vibe to like the back end, and uh, everybody knows he's gonna handle his business. Um, but he's also like cool and chill and can have fun. Um, and you know, being that you know he was taken in the draft where he was, like super cool, approachable. Like so, you know, the utmost respect for for him as a person, 
and then just what he's doing in the league already um, is special. Um, and he's going to be doing it for a long time. Like, that dude is real. He's a real deal for sure. DJ Reed, Bart says on this podcast almost every week that he thinks that he's playing at an all-pro level. Obviously came over from Seattle. What do you think about what he's doing on the outside? Because typically a guy with his body type mm -hmm. would be playing inside mm -hmm. like yourself. But DJ's going outside, and, and uh, he brings that dog in every yeah. Sunday. Yeah, like like you say, he brings that dog, and you can see it like, like if y'all hear our the 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 speech before we come out for the pregame or when we're in the pregame huddle, um, that's a different DJ than you see like <laughs> in the meeting room, and like that's that just like breathes life into you because you like dang I like, I need to match this dude or I'm gonna get left like and the same with Sauce because Sauce will get in there and speak too and like even as a rookie he's not scared to speak and 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 so me like I'm the more like laid back chill person but I feed off that I feed off those guys and and uh so I appreciate them like it's like as soon as DJ came in like that was super exciting for me to because like I was super happy to get somebody like him because you know, I had a vet that I could like now I could ask him questions yeah. and just get his experience on, on on things and how he plays the game, and um, you know, it's just it's just been awesome having him. Seven games left. What's the goal as a defensive unit? Where are you trying to take this thing? What's the goals as you know you're past the midway point? It's time to say, okay, this is what we are right now. This is what we want to be. And how do you guys get there? Yeah, I think the goal is the goal is to, to get more takeaways and to to actually score with those takeaways. Um, and, you know, we we had a lot of balls on the ground that we haven't been able to get. Um, and we feel like now's the time. Like we got to get those. We got to get those opportunities, those fumbles, those tip balls, um, those sideline adjustments when we make them. We got to be able to adjust and and make the play, um, and so the goal really is just to keep being the takeaways, um, and just keep being, keep dominating, um, you know, get back to the fundamentals, and in, in the way we tackle, um, and, and be because you know when the, it's going to get colder, mm -hmm. um, so just be the best takeaway defense in the league, and then be the best tackling defense in the league. Um, so we we do those two, you know, we'll dominate. I love what I'm hearing from him because Bart, when you were in Baltimore, you guys weren't just looking to take the ball away, but you were looking to score, and that came. You brought that attitude here with the Jets as well. So when Bart was in Baltimore, you got to get the ball to Ed Reed, right? Who, who who's after a takeaway now? Who's got? No, 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 whoa, 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 no, 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 no. We Come. didn't just give it to Ed Reed now. Stop. Uh, 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 yeah, but Ed Reed. We, no, we 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 actually practice pitching yeah. the ball, and we we practice who gets who gets. You you whenever you get intercept, you you somebody has to block the initial intended receiver, so he can't yep. come from the back. Yeah. And then you set up a perimeter, then somebody has to get back, and you yep. set up the fence like punt return. Yeah. But we actually practiced it. We actually have touchdowns where we've pitched it multiple times and we weren't afraid to pitch it yeah. um, while we're running it back. But understanding that it's not where you let it go at, it's where he catches it. Mm -hmm. So you actually have to pitch it back. No doubt. And, um, yeah. But but Ed Reed was a dynamic returner, bro. <laughs> well, a lot, well, a lot of times he was the one who got the interception, but I'm sure Chris McAllister and Samari Roll was like, yo, I got sauce too. You know what I mean? Yeah. Uh, who, who do you think would be the re best returner as far as you guys are concerned? Getting the ball in their hands. Pitch it back to me. Yeah, yeah. Pitch it back to me. <laughs> yeah. I love now it. Now you now you don't want Quentin talking about go block for me. Now you don't <laughs> get that up, Quentin. You've done your job, big fella. It's okay. Hey, but he can, you know he can move some people out the way too. Like you well, we, well, we saw yeah, we saw we saw him face mask uh, Tyreek. <laughs> yeah. But you know what I'm saying he only he only went two more yards, so it's all good. If we want to send a message yeah. by open smacking somebody, we'll give it to Quentin. But if you want to get. <laughs> Get them, get them six points. You gotta go ahead and pitch it to somebody with a little bit more RPMs on a on a um, on a speedometer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Me, uh, Sauce, 
Really, the whole back end. You can pitch the whole back end. We'll get we'll get busy with it. Hey, what do you think about this rookie class? You guys had a fine rookie class in 2021, and uh, what do you think about what this group is doing specifically? Maybe you can talk about a pair of those. We talked about sauce, but you're really getting good production from uh, Jermaine Johnson and mm -hmm. Michael Clemens. Michael Clemens keeps on popping off the screen. Like it, it, this class, it's not only talented, but it's deep. You can talk yeah. about each of the guys selected. Yeah, they they just came in with that young energy, like 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 sort of how we felt like we had to come in too last year. Like we don't care what happens before. Like they brought us here to to do something good and, and change this thing around. And and they came in with that same that same mindset, that same energy, and uh, kind of just rejuvenated everybody. I feel like um, we got sauce in the corner room. Uh, Garrett in the re receiver yeah. room, Brees, uh, Jermaine, MC, even Max and, and Ruck, like, like all those guys that just came in and with the the present tense mindset and the future oriented type mindset, like we're here in the now. Uh, this is what we can do now. This is where we want to be, um, and you know they've been excelling. Yeah, you could hear that passion out of Garrett Wilson in the locker room yesterday. That how much this game means to him and the collective as far as the outcomes are Man, concerned. Even, even at practice, like he's like going to compete. Like when we have those competition periods, and like he wants to win like every rep. And like when he like even when he does lose, like he's upset. Like because like he feels like he can win every rep, and that's how it should be. Um, and he like you can tell. Like he really loves the game and, and he wants to be his best. And I feel like that's how everybody is. I got some advice for you guys in defense. I want you to go get you a Adrian Wilson fathead <laughs> or or a Rod Woodson whitehead uh -huh. um, fathead. And I want everybody that's in a defensive backfield to stand next to it. And if you're not bigger than those guys, <laughs> no more flippers. You gotta wrap up because it's getting it's getting cold out here. Yeah. You try to hit some of these fat boys with it with them flippers, <laughs> you actually bounce them into where they're going. So yeah. unless you like Adrian Wilson size who was 6'2, <laughs> 220 at safety, no more flippers. You gotta go ahead and make, wrap it up, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it, that's part of, you know, kind of what we talked about today too, just tackling. Um and kind of, you know, as it's getting colder, like I was talking about earlier. Like, there's got to be a point of emphasis because um, these backs are good. And so we got to be able to get them on the ground. All right. You've been hey. great. Go ahead, Bart. No, no. I'll say you got a lot of guys that have not played this late in the season, um, you know, especially like the young guys that you guys depend on so much. What advice are you giving the guys that are rookies this year about their rookie wall and making sure, hey, we got to get our body fresh and we got to take care of our body? Because I remember when I was a young guy, like, I used to just sit in a hot tub. I never did the treatment that I needed to, and all the old guys look at me like I was crazy because I would never do all the little things. What are you telling these guys that may you – know, because the college season is going to end this this week. Mm -hmm. So that's about what their bodies are used to going. But you guys still have a regular season and hopefully a postseason, and really it's a battle of attrition. Who can stay healthier longer? He's taking the shortcuts by hanging out <laughs> in the hot tub. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I would say just, you know – Invest, it, invest in yourself because um, you have to. Like, your body is your money, um, and we need everybody. Uh, so you got to invest in yourself, invest the time. Uh, you know, get up a little bit earlier if you have to. Stay a little bit later. Um, but, but get it in because, you know, you'll, you'll feel a lot better on Sunday, you know, especially when it's colder and it's later. You know, get a little tighter and all that stuff. But, you know, you'll feel a lot better and, and, and everybody else will be moving a little bit slower than you are. Uh, so just invest in yourself. What's your plans for Thanksgiving? You'll be here for a little bit. Yeah, I'm going to be here. Uh, and my fam's coming up uh, Friday, I think, or so, something like that. So we might eat a little, eat a little bit. Uh, What's the go-to? <laughs> Man, when I'm at home... I got to give me a little fried turkey. Mm, uh, okay. Yeah, you got to fry the turkey, man. I can't do nothing else ever since I started doing that. Um, you know, the mac and cheese, uh, collard greens, 
cornbread, sweet potato, casserole, yams. So basically like, what you're I'm, saying I'm is no up. way in for you on Friday. No, if when I weigh in, I'm gonna still be the same weight. They don't gotta worry about me. <laughs> weigh weigh in, cancel in. You gotta tell yeah. Sal the cancel weigh in. You know, yeah. you know, because of the uh, holidays, you are gonna be eating some mama's good food. Yeah. Hey, uh, thanks for joining us today. I appreciate y'all. Yeah, man. enjoy yeah. your week with your family, and uh, let's see if you guys can start a winning streak here Sunday against Chicago. Oh yeah, most definitely. WinBet is bringing the excitement of Win Las Vegas to online sports betting and casino play. Get in on all your favorite teams, players, and sports. From boosted parlays to live in-game odds on every major sport, they have what you need to win. Jets fans in New Jersey, sign up today and use promo code XJETS. And after placing your first $100 wager, you will receive $100 to bet with. You will receive a $50 free bet and a $50 casino bonus. Again, the promo code is XJETS. Offer subject to change. Offer only available in New Jersey. Terms and conditions apply. You must be 21 or older to participate. Please visit winbet.com to view welcome offers available in Arizona, Colorado, Indiana, Louisiana, Michigan, New York, Tennessee, and Virginia. Thanks for listening to the official Jets podcast this season. Remember, subscribe, rate, and review. If you're watching us on YouTube, crush the like button. We are presented by WinBet. Betting is a team sport. Bet together. WinBet. Eric Allen, Bart Scott. I'm glad we had Michael Carter on the pod, Bart, because I think he's one of the most underrated players on this roster. I mean, always, whenever you don't hear his name and you don't, you know, I talked about it, that's a good thing, right? I mean, when they know your name, they're, they're paying attention and everybody know who you are, it's because you're giving up plays. You know, because we don't talk about him, that means he's been doing his job at a high level. And that's a tough spot, too. And uh, what he does, he brings an element of physicality that you don't always see from the nickel position. Reminds me a lot of Donald Strickland, right? When healthy, he was one of those guys that brought a lot of intangibles to our defense. He was strong and he was fearless within the box, but he was a guy that had a knack because it's so hard. You, you have to play basically in a phone booth where you don't have the leverage that you have by being able to use the sideline if you're an outside cornerback. When you're inside, it's two-way goals either way they want because they're off the ball, and they're usually coming in motion. So you have to kind of respect the cushion because you have to read and react a lot more than kind of being a cornerback who can press and make somebody you know go outside and you can get your hands on them early. Do you like where his head's at? Here's a kid who a, uh, you, yeah. 60 minutes. They give up he's three always, points. Yeah. He's always been mature, right? When we talked to him last year, he's mature and wise beyond his years. He's a guy that has an old soul. And that's perfect for that position because you have to really have a lot of experience and a lot of um, patience to be in there. And that's you know, those are virtues and traits of an older gentleman. If you're Robert Sala, how are you addressing the team early this week as you try to put New England behind you, correct the mistakes, and then look ahead to Chicago because you do have seven games remaining. The external world is going to write the Jets off again, but you're still right there in the mix. I don't think anybody's writing the Jets off, but I think you have to address the elephant in the room. Everything that's bothering the team, you got to have an airing it out session mm. because what you don't want is you want you don't want to divide the units, right? Because that's what the media, that's what a lot of people are going to do because some of the post game comments. So you're going to have to make sure that you unify each other, but you have to address it and say we've covered that, and you have to actually cover it. If somebody has something to say, you have to allow them the opportunity to be able to say that because you don't want anybody harboring any feelings or any emotions that can be detrimental to the chemistry of the team. But you have to address it because if you don't, then people, you know, you will address it and, and, and units will address it by themselves. You don't want that. You want an environment where you can monitor the air and the out session. You know, all football teams are big families and all families need therapy. Yeah. So that's usually <laughs> what that arena is all about because it's going to be highs and lows, but it's those who can be able to navigate through the lows that be able to have the chance of having the most successful season because it's about standing together and getting answers, not pointing fingers. What do you see from this matchup? The Bears have lost four consecutive games, but Don't they, matter. They, yeah, you've said it all along. They've been in it every week. The last three games, I've been losing by like a point. And they're dangerous, right? They finally adopted. So everything that you saw, you're going to see at a higher level than what you saw week one against the Baltimore Ravens. 
because the Ravens were at the beginning of the season. They've been playing at a high level using this, you know, Lamar Jackson style offense that really benefits and favors the skill set of Fields. So you're going to have to make sure that you really study the film, but they're going to force you to play 11 on 11. And it's tough when you have a mobile quarterback because you almost have to have two spies on them because this guy in five games were, had over 500 yards rushing, something that had never been done from that position, including Michael Vick and Lamar Jackson. So that tells you the talent that he had. And he was not known for running the football when he was in college. He was known for being able to throw from the pocket. So this is something, an element that he's showing us. This isn't a running quarterback that's continuing to run. This is a throwing quarterback that has learned how to run. No, on Sunday against Atlanta, he got banged up a little bit. It was the non-throwing shoulder, the left shoulder. We'll have to find out where he is as the week progresses. With that being said, uh, what do you think of Fields as a prospect now here a couple years into the National Football League where, uh, to your point, looks like he's just continuing to ascend and Chicago is going to gradually get some more pieces around him as they move forward? Yeah, $100 million in salary cap space, um, a, a co new culture regime. Um, they're actually taking a step back because they started over, got rid of a lot of their good players, got rid of Khalil Mack, got rid of Raquan Smith, got rid of uh, Robert Quinn. But that, that's going to free up a lot of salary cap space for them in the future to build around this young, talented player. And he's making an argument to be the best quarterback selected in that draft. I mean, I think he's really figuring it out, and they found an offense that suits him. You know, um, I think the league should really pay close attention and be put on high alert once they're able to get better players around him and be able to spend some of that $100 million in salary cap space that they're reportedly going to have next year and also the draft cap capital that they've been able to grab from the Ravens and other trades that they've made, plus their own. What's the defensive game plan against a guy like Fields? You have to make sure that you flush him to ways where you know he's going to run. You want him to be able to run and flush him to his left side because that means he has to throw across his body. Quarterback won't be as accurate. Uh, if he, if he you know, scrambles to his right, he still can throw the ball on the run. It's going to put defenders in tough positions. You want to rarely ever play cover one, because if everybody backs his turn and he breaks the first wave of defense, which is the defensive line, he can put your, your, your defensive backs and your defensive players in a very, very tough position and trying to tackle this guy in space. He's strong. He's fast. He's elusive. And he's um, he's motivated. Do you think this is a game where we're going to see a lot of Michael Carter and James Robinson? Uh, the Bears, statistically, they're giving up about 150 yards a game on the ground. And you know the Jets right now, as they try to establish an offensive identity, will probably look to lean to the run, I imagine. I mean, no Ray Cron Smith. That guy was, you know, one of the best in the game. He went to Baltimore. Um, you want to try and exploit that. And you have to be consistent with it. I thought... You know, maybe they got away from the run a little bit. You, it's you got to, especially in this weather. It's about wearing guys down. I think guys like James James Robinson and Ty Johnson, those big backs, have to get in a rhythm and a flow. And you got to allow them to dish out some punishment to these defenders early in the game, so that when you get to the third and fourth quarter, much like when you see with Derrick Henry every week, those guys that were very bold to make tackles before aren't as enthusiastic to step up in the third and fourth quarter. With where the Jets are, current AFC landscape. Everybody in the AFC East now is at least two games north of 500. Uh, and on the horizon after this game, Bart, you're going to Minnesota and then Buffalo. How big of a game is this for this team? It's a must win, right? Because you didn't take care of business the week before. You find yourself in last place, even though you do have a very good record. You know, you have to try and get to 10, and you have to start trying to get to 10 right now. And, you know, Chicago will help you, but they won't help you as much as winning against AFC opponents. But at this point, you have no margin for error because other teams are starting to trend in a, in a, in a good direction as well. You know, you look at teams like Cincinnati, who's starting to figure it out, and, you know, they won the head-to-head. -head. So now when you don't take care of business and win the division – now you're worrying about scenarios and you don't want to be playing that game when it gets to, to, to selection Sunday, so to speak, when you have to worry about did you win enough AFC games because tiebreakers and head-to-heads, you know, you don't want to get into that um, geometry. Happy Thanksgiving to you and your family. Uh, we will be watching on Thursday the Buffalo Bills going to your hometown facing the Detroit Lions. Then you got a night game, an interesting one that the Jets fans will be watching because the Patriots – 
are playing at the Minnesota Vikings. What's your favorite Thanksgiving tradition or food? Favorite uh, food is uh, my mother's banana pudding, homemade. Okay, how about tradition? None, none, none of that Jello pudding stuff, you know what I'm saying? That's made from flour and vanilla abstracts from scratch. Homemade. What about tradition? Tradition, uh, we used to do the old school turkey bowl where we used to go out, and when I was younger, it was always a lot of snow. Uh, so we would go out there and play a football game before the football games come on because the Lions were always playing on Sunday. It's written in a contract with the NFL. It is. We will be watching what happens in the Motor City on Thursday. Happy Thanksgiving. We will see you all next week.